Welcome back, teachers. Today we're going to be continuing our study through the epistles to the Thessalonians. Last week we kind of introduced the topic, or Paul introduced the topic, of the idea of transformation right. and how the gospel was key in that transformation. We talked about partnerships. But today we're going to kind of take a one step forward, for, uh, forward or, or Paul will, in this letter to the Thessalonians yeah. about that gospel being stewarded, right. the idea of stewardship and how faithful stewardship has a great impact. Right. I uh, I have three kids. You got two kids. Um, they're great kids. And uh, when you have children, you understand, we understand kind of, or at least we discover it yeah. <laughs> the day sure. they get born, that we have a stewardship of those kids. Like, uh, we don't just bring them home and, and, or we don't just leave them at the hospital. They actually want you to take them with you. Yeah, wrap them up and put them in your lap and say, here you go. <laughs> yeah, we're not... Uh, we have to take them home and do something with them. Yeah. For Paul, um, there's a stewardship. He definitely feels that. And he, he talks about it um, in, in this particular passage. And he uses familial language um, in this particular passage. Uh, in one section, he talks about a, a, a nurse that cherishes her children. And another passage, another part of the, the passage, he talked about loving a father, a loving father uh, doing something with his kids. And um, and he talks about in that, in talking through all of that, he's giving them um, this example of, hey, we you got saved and we were a part of that. You know, Paul and Silas had been a part of that church, the starting of it, seeing those people get saved. And what I think is amazing, Corin, this is a huge um, encouragement to me, is he's saying that there's a stewardship and that having this stewardship of the gospel means stewarding them. And he doesn't say this is what we should do or this is what they should do. He implies that by telling them this is what we did do. Right. This is how we did live among you. This is how we stewarded the gospel and, and thought through what it means. And so he is by implication saying this is how uh, ministers of the gospel should live and how they should live if they're going to be faithful to steward it. Just like a parent stewards their children, a stewardship of the gospel means I care not just for the message itself, but also for the people that we give that message to. So in Paul's mind, it's not just evangelism and we share a message and then we walk away. In Paul's mind, uh, it's we share that gospel message to people. And we help those people uh, continue in what um, and what all and what the gospel means and how it should live out in the way we live our lives. And so, so there's a so you're saying that if I want my kids to eat their Brussels sprouts, I have to eat my yeah. Brussels you can't yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and here's a cool thing: there you can get like broccoli instead of Brussels sprouts or something <laughs> like that. But no, no. The truth is, that's exactly right. Our 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 kids tend to become uh, what we lead them to be. Yeah. Right. So faithful stewardship displays three characteristics we see in our lesson, uh, beginning with the first one is the idea of a bold proclamation. Yeah. The first two verses here say, For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain, but even after ye had suffered before and were shamefully entreated as ye know at Philippi, we were bold in our, in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Yeah, I, I love that because um, he's... Again, to, to reiterate the point, he's not saying this is how we should have done it or this is how you need to do this. He said, this is how we did it. Uh, you know, and you're my brothers. He talked, calls them brethren. Like they had gone from being people they didn't even know to brothers, familiar, again, familial language. They're part of our life. And you know that when we came to you, it was not in vain. And that what it says in verse one, uh, what we did made a difference, not because of them, but because of the gospel, right? Sure. And he he points to the fact that, you know, when we came, we came from Philippi. And if you look back at what happened in Philippi, we looked at it last week. There was all kinds of affliction and persecution that happens there. It happens there in Thessalonica, too. And those that church, those church members endured it, as we talked about. But um, he said... It didn't shut us down. It encouraged us. We were bold uh, in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. He's not saying we were bringing contention 
we were trying to make contention. He's saying our gospel created contention because there was a group of people that didn't like it. And that's why it took boldness to proclaim it because um, we were facing persecution, but we loved you so much. And it was not in vain, even though there was contention, even though there was persecution, we boldly proclaimed and you know it because you are the evidence of it. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. A stewardship of the gospel means first and foremost that it has to be proclaimed despite the despite the environs in which it's being proclaimed. Right. Um, to steward it well means you don't keep it to yourself. You have to share it. Yeah. Um, didn't, didn't Paul talk about that in Romans 10, Corey? Right. Talks about how shall they call upon him and whom they have not believed, Romans 10, 14, and 15. How shall they believe in him and whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Yeah, it's very logical. The gospel has to be believed. Uh, if you don't believe the gospel, people are going to die, separated it from God in their sins on their way to the lake of fire. And so um, a stewardship of the gospel means people need to, to believe rightly about it which means they have to hear about it, which means somebody has to say something about it, yeah. and someone has to be sent to tell them. Paul's context was, at some point, the Holy Spirit said, separate unto me Saul and Barnabas, for the, Paul and Barnabas for the work I've sent them to do. So they were sent by the Holy Spirit. They were sent by um, the church at Antioch. They were, in a sense, Paul's um, conversion. Hey, you need to you need to follow me. I've got much work for. He said the God said to Ananias, this guy Paul, he's he's got a lot of work that I got him to do. So God, God had stewarded Paul with this particular mission and message. And so for Paul, it meant I have to be bold in my proclamation of it, because even if I am going to be persecuted. I think certainly it would be foolish for us to, as leaders and as Sunday school teachers. Um, expect a bold proclamation of our people if we're not willing to do that in our own lives. Yeah, I think Jesus had this whole discipleship thing baked in, the, the obedience part of it baked in, because um, part of leading other people, I certainly have felt this in parenting, all of a sudden, a song I'm playing, and I've got kids in the back seat. it's like, that song didn't used to bother me playing it, and then all of a sudden, sure. what am I playing my kids? <laughs> right. I need to straighten up, you know? When we're watching a movie and there's a cuss word, it's like, I'm just being honest sure, and transparent sure, with you. Sure. Like, me leading other people means, man, I got to live up to what I'm telling them to do. We got to get rid of hypocrisy. And and in terms of the gospel, if if you, Sunday school teacher, if me, pastor, if you, youth pastor, want student ministries and Sunday school classes and churches that will be evangelistic, certainly we have to be evangelistic right. we if we want them to proclaim the gospel boldly then we better do it in our sermons but we also better do it in our neighborhoods yeah. and and in our in our school systems and everywhere else we find ourselves and it's not just and it's not just pastors or lay leaders job it's really everyone it's everybody command job. yeah to be bold and to boldly proclaim the gospel right so so you can't be a good steward of the gospel and keep it to ourselves yeah. he did paul say if our gospel be hid it's hid to those who are lost. That's right. And what Paul is saying is, I didn't hide it from you guys, even though I was being persecuted and I came to you from persecution and I left with persecution, um, I had to boldly proclaim and it wasn't in vain. It made a difference. You guys, brothers, yeah. are the difference of that was made by God in that bold proclamation. Yeah. And certainly there's two sides of the coin here, right? Because he continued, it's not just a bold proclamation to get saved, you know? It's right. Number two, he did it with gentle care. Right. The stewardship of the gospel was a bold, there's a bold proclamation, but there's also a gentle care. Verse 3 says, For our exhortation was not a deceit, nor an uncleanness, nor in guile, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, so we speak not as pleasing men, but God, we try their hearts. For neither at any time do we use flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness, nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others. When ye might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her child, there, her children. There's a kind of three three parts to this I'm going to point out. One, he says, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak. So there is 
That's how I came up with the theme of this lesson. Paul saying, we have a stewardship of the gospel. And so by God entrusting us with this gospel, we have to live a certain way. We have to speak a certain way uh, in keeping with that gospel. Then he kind of gives kind of two sections. You have the not and the were. If you go through, he says, we were not, nor were we, neither were we. And then he, he makes this list of the things that they weren't, mm -hmm. right? And if what were, what were some of those things? Well, verse 3 says, uh, deceit, uncleanly, yeah. uncleanness, guile. Uh, verse 4 talks about um, pleasing men uh, right. rather than God. Uh, verse 5, flattering word, cloak of covetousness. Verse 6, uh, uh, seeking glory uh, of yourself or being burdensome. Right. So he's essentially saying uh, because we have the stewardship of the gospel and because God entrusted us with it, we weren't these things, right? And if you think about each one, like, for instance, deceit, the gospel is true, mm -hmm. right? And so we confuse people when... We teach them the truth of the gospel, but then we lie to them about other things. And what happens is you and I were talking today about um, someone we're ministering to, and they're having a hard time believing the gospel because they see something else of people that claim the gospel in the way that they live, and it's creating this, well, if you don't believe it to the point that it's affecting how you live, why would I believe it at all, right? And so a faithful stewardship of the gospel means there's some things that we don't do because how we live reflects the gospel. He talks about deceit, uncleanness, right. guile. Um, later on, he talks about covetousness and glory um, from men, even you. Um, John talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And what Paul kind of, those are examples of worldliness, all that's in the world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. What Paul's saying is, our our gospel proclamation was not a vehicle for the things that the world provides. We didn't we didn't share the gospel with you, and a stewardship of the gospel that we shared to, with you meant that we we weren't doing that to try to get rich, to try to get what we want, or to try to be like the heroes in our own little play, gathering up followers of us, and that Paul's name would be great or Silas's name would be great. Right. He says that's not how we were, and in fact. He uses this term and said, instead of all that, he says, we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. When you think about gentle, gentle is not a, someone who's a bodybuilder, someone who's epically strong. You hand him a, a baby, right? Um, the gentleness doesn't mean he's not strong anymore. Gentleness means that they're giving an appropriate amount of strength to the situation. Mm -hmm. they're, they're behaving appropriate to the circumstance. And what Paul's saying is, we were gentle. The way we lived among you was appropriate to the stewardship that we had been giving with the gospel. And that meant that it wasn't enough for us to proclaim the gospel to you, to hand you a gospel track, to preach a gospel message, and then to walk away and hope it all worked out. Instead, we weren't like that, and w and we didn't stay and then create more problems and and cloud the gospel with a bunch of wrong living that wasn't reflective of the gospel. Instead, we were gentle. We were like a nurse mm. who cherisheth her children. Here's the portion of the video that we get to encourage our wives, right? Sure. Your wife and my wife, I know uh, we have kids. They love our kids. What kind of stuff does your does your wife do that reflects this cherishing? What right. do you think? So right now my wife is a stay-at-home mom and she gets up early. She's got taking care of the kids right from getting up, uh, <laughs> yeah. taking sure that they have breakfast. Uh, my wife does uh, homeschooling with our daughter, so she cares about her education. Uh, and then throughout the day, she's helping them. I, our, our son's still at home, so he's uh, taking naps and so she's doing laundry in between I, all this. I'm and... laughing, I'm laughing, Corey, because even this morning getting up just getting up and getting them ready and out the door. Um, I used to think, what? Well, that's not that hard. It's, it's time to get up and leave. You know, before we were married, I'd be like, do you want to go somewhere? Yes. Then let's leave. So we stand up and we leave. Right. Turn on the lights on. Now, with kids, it's like, do you want to go somewhere? Cool. 
Okay, uh, here we'll, we go. We'll meet the car in 45 minutes. <laughs> Put on your shoes. I don't want to. I, I, I didn't ask if you wanted to. It's Burning like a, cats, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, there is just so much that it takes. And I know your wife's like mine. Um, my, my wife is not just concerned with my kids surviving. Mm -hmm. they, she wants them to thrive. So she's, like you said, education, their, their homework. They want to make sure they got everything they need that, that – Oh, you might be a little bit cold today because it's a little cold. So make sure you got yeah. there, there is a care. And the, and then the cherishing is not just the care, like obligatory, making sure they survive. There's also an affection that a mother has. There's a making sure that those kids know they're loved yeah. and, and that they're um, and that they're cherished. And, I, and so what Paul was saying is um, this gospel created this new life in you. The, it trans it, 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 you're you're born again, and we didn't just stop with the with the proclamation and your conversion. It moved on into helping you to grow, and so that meant we had to live lives in front of you that were not harsh, that did not do things inappropriately, like deceit and guile, and us trying to 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 rob you or to or to um, make a, a buck off of you or to become like the kings of a kingdom. No, we were gentle. What we did, we did because we wanted you to thrive and because we love you. And I think, man, that is the kind of ministry that is reflective of a right stewardship of the gospel. That's what was done for, for us. That was what was done for Paul. Yeah. And Paul's just passing along to them what had been done for him. And so the Great Commission isn't just evangelism but it's clearly takes evangelism it's also discipleship disciple making teaching them to observe all things that i care for, that i've that i've taught you which starts with hey we're going to protect you we're going to help you we're going to care for you and then it moves on to this third thing right so as you were talking about stewarding the gospel we got bold proclamation a gentle care um, but it doesn't stop there, right? There's, right. there's a, an element of we didn't do all these things, but here's what we did do. Right. Uh, we see that in verses 8 through 12. How about we take each one of these and just kind of look the verse at each one of That sounds good. The third characteristic is the idea of a blameless example. Right. So verse 8 says, So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls because ye were dear unto us. I I'm, I want to memorize that verse mm -hmm. because I want my life um, here at Trinity Baptist Church and in my ministry here to be like that. I didn't just give you the gospel. I gave you myself. I gave you, I gave you our own souls. Why? Because I love you. Mm -hmm. And I think, man, people don't care what you know. Pastor Bales used to say, and I'm sure he stole it from somewhere else, one of our mentors. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And Paul's saying a stewardship of the gospel means that you love your people. Mm -hmm. And that you and that you that you give yourself to God and the gospel, but you also give yourself to them. Yeah. He's saying, I love you guys. And we didn't just give you a message, we gave you ourselves. So what does that look like? He he kind of goes on to say that. And I love this about Paul. He's like he's saying. Again, he's not just saying this is what we should have done. This is what we actually did. This was our example, yeah. right? Verse 9. The first one's hard work. Yeah. Number 9 says, For we remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preach unto you the gospel of God. I think here he's giving a specific example at a specific time. He said, when we came in, we didn't start taking offerings from you so that we could live off of this message. Um, that would have confused you. Now, Paul, in other places in the Bible, is very clear that it's not wrong for someone to, to receive an offering um, and to live off of that so that they can be more effective for the gospel. I don't think that's wrong. Sure. But what I do think is, um, in this circumstance, Paul said, hey, we didn't even do that because we didn't want to confuse. We wanted to be an example to you of someone that's working hard. Here, we know Paul was a tent maker. And I think he actually, here he says, we labored night and day so that we could survive, so we could have food on the table, so that we could be clothed and have what we need. But really, we did that so that then we could go, go on and do ministry. 
ministry, if it's done right and reflects the gospel, it is hard work. Mm -hmm. I think there are people that think that ministry is not hard work. And I want to just pause here and look at the camera, the guy who's watching, the lady who's watching, and say, yeah. um, we understand that ministry can be hard work. You preparing this lesson on top of taking care of your family and doing your job and ministering in other places of the church, it's hard work. And I just want to say thank you for doing it. Yeah. And I want to say to you, um, it's worth it. Hang in there and and give ministry away and replicate yourself. Um, but thank you for the hard work that you do, not just to proclaim the gospel, but to live among the people you're teaching and exemplify what God is doing in you, in your class and in your church. Um, I think we can't take away this idea that if the gospel is important and if the word of God is important, then we should do the work that it takes to not just share a message, but also share our lives. Um, and so Paul says, you want to know how much we loved you? We labored night and day so that we could survive, but so that you could hear the gospel and thrive spiritually in that. So that contains hard work, being a blameless example. But also, he also goes on to talk about an excellent behavior. In verse 10, it says, Ye are witnesses of God, and God also, how holy and justly and unblamedly we behaved ourselves among you that believe. I love that. That could really sum up probably the whole passage, where basically he's saying, you guys were witnesses. Like, I'm not telling you something you don't know about us. We weren't perfect, but we were blameless. God, God has transformed us, and we wanted to live lives in front of you that um, were holy and that were just and without blame. Um, you needed to see that because that's what the gospel transformation produces, and that's what we wanted to see in you. So you have, it was hard work. We gave ourselves to you, and we lived exemplary lives in front of you and that end up having a flavor to it. And that flavor is fatherly encouragement. Verse 11. Verse 11 says, As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged, charged every one of you as a father doth his children. And I, I love that too. Uh, you had the mother and the cherishing in, in the first part. Here you have like the dad way of doing it. You right. know, the dad way of ministry. And I like that. Uh, what were the three words he used? He used exhorted, comforted, and charged. Right. Exhorting is what? Like exhortation, the encouragement. The yeah. hey, hey, there's the goal. Go, go, you know, you can yeah. do it. Yeah, I think that's true. Comforted. Yeah. I Dads do. are probably less good at that than moms are, but there is still that. No way. Yeah, 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 there's a comfort to it. But then there's that word charged. You know, hey, do this. Mm -hmm. You can do it. You go, know, go take the hill now. Yeah. Take the hill, <laughs> you know, get up. Uh Walk it off. <laughs> Rub some dirt in it, right? Like right. that's kind of how dads can be. But but uh, I think Paul Paul's saying, you know, we weren't just mothers, we were like fathers. We we gave you that encouragement, we gave you that comfort, and we challenged you to live up to the gospel that you received. And then that and then that all those things, the the hard work, the godly example, this godly example that looked like hard work, that looked like um, a, an example that looked like this fatherly encouragement and admonishment and challenge, it all had kind of a focus to a goal in mind. Yeah. Like a coach is trying to get their kids to win, like a dad's trying to get their kids to be what they need to be. He says this word that begins verse 12, that. Mm -hmm. We did all this for a purpose. That what? We'll read it. That ye would walk worthy of God, who have called you unto his kingdom and glory. Oh, I love that. The whole reason that we left persecution and endured more persecution in boldly proclaiming the gospel for you and not being harsh, not being deceitful and full of guile and full of our own glory and living off of you, but the reason we labor really hard and cherish you like our own kids and worked hard like a dad works hard and charged you and comforted you and, and challenged you. The reason we did all of that was because we want to glorify God, not ourselves. Yeah. We want your lives to be worthy, to walk worthy of what God has done in the gospel in you. And it's not about our kingdom being expanded. Ultimately, this is about God and his kingdom being expanded 
expanded. Amen. And what a what a great passage that just compels us to live a and to do to do ministry according to the stewardship of the gospel. Wow. Right. So and I mean how how important it, it what I'm drawing from this lesson lesson too is is how how important it is as a leader to be doing the right things, living the right things for the gospel's sake. That what we're doing in church, what we're doing in our in our Sunday school areas is not just something to fill Sunday morning service. Correct. With. That there is a goal, there is a destination, there is a spiritual destination for every single person, every single soul that comes into our classrooms that we have a responsibility to, uh, to boldly proclaim the gospel, and then turn around and, and encourage them to say, hey, that you you have a walk too, right? And there is we're doing this all because of God's glory, right? The teacher that's teaching this class, uh, the pastor, anybody that's that's ministering according to the gospel, the church member that has a family, um, there really is the knowing what the Bible says and proclaiming what the Bible says, but there's also a living out what the Bible says. Um, evangelism, saying it, discipleship, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you, um, follow me as I followed Christ. Paul says, things you've heard and learned and seen in me. Timothy, commit to faithful men mm -hmm. who shall be able to teach others also. So there's the proclamation of the gospel, and then there's the care to the, those who receive the gospel, and there's a handing off a stewarding of that gospel that they received to say, hey, go walk worthy of that gospel, which means bold proclamation that you do. We did it. Look at us. Look at what we did. Now it's time for you to go do that with somebody else. And the shepherd smells like the sheep. Mm. <laughs> He's with them. Yeah. He's there. He's caring for them. And then sometimes sheep turn into shepherds in our way of thinking, and they go do the same thing for other people. And that's how the gospel, the authentic gospel, got to St. Pete, Florida for us. Yeah. And that's how it got to Finley, Ohio, and and that's how it's going to get beyond this address and to make a difference in the lives of people. And, and teacher, that's how the gospel is going to get uh, through you to your class and beyond it. And yeah. so thank you for the hard work Let's live lives of godly example in and among our our classes and our churches, so that um, so that so that the people that are hearing us and influenced well by us would walk worthy of the gospel they received, and God's kingdom would be expanded. Amen. That's what it's all about. Yeah, Corey, would you pray for yeah, us? Yeah, let's pray. God, thank you for the opportunity we have to serve you. God, to be faithful stewards of the gospel ministry, the ministry that you've given to us, the ministry of our Sunday school classes. Father, I pray that you would help us to do exactly as we see in Scripture, Lord, that we would be able to boldly proclaim the gospel message, that we would do that with a gentle care, Father, with a blameless example, so that others will be saved, will follow that lead, Father, will be able to be those kinds of stewards, faithful stewards in their own lives, in their families' lives, in their in their in their circles of influence. But God, that ultimately that destination would be reached, that we would walk worthy and that you would receive honor and glory because you are worthy Amen. of it. Thank you for this text that we have to speak now. Give us the clarity of mind to speak it and the boldness to do so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, teachers. See you next time. Go get them.